Yes. How's everybody going, doing there in the back? Wonderful. Can you hear me? Wonderful. Okay, yeah. Let's begin the proceedings this morning. We'd like to have, we'll start off with uh, the presentation of colors by the Marine Corps Security Battalion, Banger Color Guards, led by Sergeant Nicholas Widener. Let's all rise, please. Call the Philharmony, please. To sing the national anthem of the United States <coughs> national anthem. I just want to say as I look out among you that um, this remembrance ceremony allows us to reflect each year on the sacrifices made by those that were in line, marching, walking, shuffling, falling, starving, dragging, and dying during the Bataan Death March that began in April in 1942. We need to pass the legacy of our brave departed soldiers, our remaining survivors, our war veterans, and our current military men and women who will continue to fight and defend and serve these beautiful United States of America. We remain safe today and free because of all of these war efforts. I want to thank you for being here. It's an honor. The rain is just stopping so that we can have refreshments afterwards. A lot of people are behind the scenes making this happen every year. And your continued observance is wonderful for us to, um, to share. This is a strong bond. We have 3,000 Filipinos among us in our community. And the strength between Americans and Filipinos is very strong and continues to grow. Thank you again for being here. And now I'm going to introduce um, Councilman, um, who's the president of City Council, Greg Wheeler. He was going to introduce that speaker because that's his father-in-law, but he's going to come up and say a few words to us before Leslie. Do you mind Wonderful. if I... No <laughs> yes. Oh, you're quite welcome. All right. Well, good morning. Um, so my my um, my assignment today was to introduce my father-in-law, and um, actually that's been made quite easy for me. He's now um, well known among you. But I I want to give you a little bit of his background. It's in your program, but I'm gonna I'm gonna read some of this because he's he's got has quite a military career, and um, you know it's just a 
it's really quite amazing what he's accomplished also. And, and he was born in 1939 in San Francisco and lived there throughout World War II. Um, from 1947 to 49, he lived in Manila with his grandfather, of course, Major Albert uh, M. Jones, and we know about that. Um, he graduated from Lowell High School in San Francisco in 1957 and attended the University of Texas for one year and then graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy in 1962. He also received an MSA in Management Engineering from George Washington University in 1975. He was a designated Naval Aviator and Naval Helicopter Pilot in 1964. Principally flew helos operationally, including one tour flying Navy attack helos in Vietnam, 1971 and 1972, and another as commanding officer of a helicopter ASW squadron. Much sea time, including multiple deployments aboard Randolph, Essex, Independence, and Eisenhower, as well as the executive officer of the Iwo Jima. He graduated from the U.S. Naval Test Pilot School at Pax River, Maryland in 1968 and subsequently had three tours there, the last being Director of Rotary Wing Test and Deputy Commander of the Test Center. He also served as Program Manager in Washington, D.C. He considers this tour to be the low point of his career. I'll have to ask him about that later. <laughs> He, re he retired from the Navy as a commanding officer of the Naval Avionics Center, Indianapolis, Indiana. He continued his career after that self-employed as a management consultant and systems engineer following his Navy career. Currently resides in Port Ludlow. So I'm, I'm going to actually ask for one more round of applause for Captain Henry. So with that, I, um, I want to say I have... I've really come to appreciate this event every year. It's it's one I I truly do look forward to. And um, again, I'm Greg Wheeler. I'm the son-in-law of Captain Henry. I'm a lifelong Bremertonian and a Navy veteran. So, thank you again. Thank you, Councilman Wheeler. We also have Leslie Dogs here, whose father was a survivor of the Bataan Death March. She represents the district here in the area of Bataan, and let's welcome her here. Leslie. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I'm honored to be here today. My name is Leslie Daugs, and I am on the Bremerton City Council, and this beautiful Remembrance Park is in my district, so welcome to District 2. My story um, is really this story is really close to my heart this memorial service is close to my heart as it's part of my family and my heritage i am honored to speak at this event again this year honoring the events from world war ii that we remember here today must never be forgotten this day and this park have a very special meaning for me like many second generation Filipinos in Kitsap County, my parents moved here and I grew up here as a direct result of World War II. You see, both my parents grew up in the Philippines. During World War II, they married and moved to the U.S. in 1958 when my father proudly joined the United States Navy. Growing up here, my parents gave us the best of our heritage. We grew up with colorfully decorated homes, a strong multi-generational family life, respect and honor for the military service and a patriotic love for our country and community. My parents also protected us from stories of their childhood that included their homeland being devastated by the horrors of war that included the Battle of Bataan occupation and the Battle of Bataan death march. We had a family full of love. To me, my father is a loving and caring man. He helped raise four daughters, and as we started to have our own children, my dad could always be counted on to rock them to sleep. There is another side of my father that is hard for me to comprehend. As a child during World War II, my father spent the occupation in living in caves with his mother and his sisters. You see, my grandfather was a U.S. Army officer who retired in the Philippines. I never met my grandfather because along with 5,000 to 10,000 Filipinos, 600 to 650 American POWs, my grandfather did not survive the Bataan March. Our family connection is as close as it gets. 
After the return of the U.S. forces and following World War II, my father and mother immigrated to the United States. My father joined the U.S. Navy and proudly served in the Korean and Vietnam War. I grew up here. I had a wonderful and safe childhood right here in East Bremerton. My children and grandchildren live in freedom and safety as a direct result of those who served and died during those faithful years in the Philippines. My father and mother were there. My grandfather died there. I will, al I will always honor and remember Bataan in my family and in my heritage. I just want to say thank you very much for having me here and thank you to all those soldiers that fought for us for the freedom that we have right now and I continue to thank you all for everything you've done. Thank you. Thank you, Council Person Dogs. Dogs. I know there are a lot of service, ex-service men here in the audience today. I would like for all of you to stand up, please. Let's honor all of you with a round of applause for those folks. Thank you for your service to our country. Thank you. Now I know uh, our program has taken a long, a long time. I'm gonna invite anybody who is in the audience today who was somehow related to this Bataan Death March. Because if, you, if nobody comes up here, I'm gonna invite someone who is at the end of the war, who served and stayed on the USS Missouri when the peace treaty was signed between the United States and Japan. Is there anyone else have to share a story about the Bataan Death March? We all know it's a huge atrocity, brutality, and horror for those people who endured. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> My uncle Bob, uh, Air Force retired, uh, was a survivor of the march, and I remember growing up as a, a, a child, he absolutely would not talk about it. We would bring it up, and he would just shake his head and, and just say nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you can come this way, sir. And please identify your name. Okay. I am John Hoffman, one of the founding members of the Paragraph Brass, and I do have a very heart rendering and very happy story about the Baton Death March. I served with uh, uh, Pablo Cruz in the 37th Artillery up in Alaska in about 1963, and he was a survivor of this thing. And he lost a very good friend, and he mourned his passing. I mean, he spoke very limited English, he was very poor in health, because, you know, they started out bad and they got worse. And he was sunk twice, being sent to Japan to be a, a, a worker. And he was also in the army when he was sent to Korea. And two weeks later, he was in a Korean prisoner war camp, starved and tortured all that. By the time I knew him, he'd spent half his military service as a prisoner war. Well, anyway, he mourned the passing of a fellow. And, and hardly anybody else in the whole unit knew him because he spoke very bad English. He was in terrible shape. He smelled awful, and nobody associated with him. Anyway, he was stuck in my unit because he had nowhere else to go. And the Army was cheaper for him to keep him active than to put him out there and send him to hospitals. Anyway, the Army does not have a very nice way of getting a change of command, like the Navy. The Navy, they do it. Everybody has a speech. They shake hands, and the new guy takes over. And the Army, you stand uh, uh, morning formation, there's somebody new standing up there. He calls everybody to attention, inspection. Pablo's right to my right, of course, you know, military thing. You look straight forward, you use your peripheral vision. And when he went, this new fellow came right in front of Pablo, uh, I could feel a certain tension. They stared at each other, they grasped each other, hugged and kissed. Now, how many times do you see that in the military? The miracle was, they both thought they'd lost each other at Patan. They were both the ones who had missed each other. He was an E3. 
the captain, of course, was the captain. And I don't know, uh, the captain being a, sort of a imperious captain, I never got much chance to talk to him, so I don't know his story. But somehow he got all the way from uh, the Philippines, became an army officer, and he held a special meeting of the, of the uh, 37th Artillery and told the story of Pablo Cruz. And at that point, everybody really realized we had an American hero who had gone through more hell than anybody could ever imagine. So that's my story. I didn't, wasn't part of the Britannic Death March, but I was very proud to have served with two courageous men who did. Thank you. Thank you very much. At uh, this time, I'd like to ask uh, uh, your indulgence to please listen to this gentleman who, who uh, was on the deck, like I said, of the USS Missouri when the peace treaty was signed by the United States and Japan after the war. Mr. Dan, Don Van Hooser, coming up front, please. I'm very thankful we have a lot of good men and women here that have uh, participated in World War II and I, it was also my privilege to be on the ship called the LST-1024. And so my ship and several other LSTs, we took the soldiers up to the beach there in October 1944 at uh, Lady in the Philippines. And we unloaded our soldiers there to go ashore to fight the Japanese. But of course the Japanese uh, soldiers, they were very smart. They, they had retired back up into the hills away from the beach. So it made it easier for our soldiers to go ashore when we, uh, uh, out of the ship LST, the bow is, opens up and the soldiers, our soldiers, go ashore. And uh, so I'm very grateful that I was an electrician aboard ship and my job was to push the button on the controller panel for that big bow door to open up and the ramps to go down. And uh, so the uh, upper ramp, as it went down, parts to go down, uh, they blew a fuse. So I had to go down to the uh, uh, engine room and uh, put in a good fuse, go back and punch the button again, and that made the upper ramp to come down and the soldiers ran off to fight the Japanese. So I was, I'm very grateful that I had the privilege of uh, being in the Navy at that time, and I was electrician at first class, <laughs> and uh, so it was my job to make sure everything was working okay. Uh, after uh, the uh, official landing, uh, our ships re pull away from the shore for a, a short distance, and then after a few days, some of us sailors were permitted to go ashore in the Philippines, and we visited with the Filipino people and we had a good time. So uh, thank you for your attention and uh, thank you for all your help. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Van Hooser. At this time, I'd like to ask the uh, Suquamis uh, Color Guard to do the honors. Retire the colors.
Thank you. I would like to thank uh, all of you who have come today to participate in this program. The Filipino American Association of Kitsap County, Phil Harmony, who rendered the song of the national anthems of the United States and the Philippines. Chaplain Biadog from uh, Naval Base Kitsap. And all the dignitaries that were here today, Leslie Dowgs, uh, nice to meet you for the first time. I met you. Mayor Lent, see you again, ma'am. I know you've, you've supported this, like I said, event for the years that you've been mayor of our town. Very welcome. Uh, the people that were that put together the program, Mary Dombrowski, really were the one that needs to be thanked here because Thank you, Mary. her and Bob Medley, who have coordinated everybody's efforts and to make this thing happen. We really appreciate your uh, continued effort there, Mary and uh, Bob. And also the uh, VFW, who has uh, sponsored the seats to be delivered here today. The volunteers, Hill Raimondo, many of you I can't name. Uh, thank you so very much for coming. The Farragut Band, of course, who renders uh, all the beautiful music that we hear. There is some refreshments over here on the right-hand side of the, well, of the podium, you might say, after the ceremony for you to uh, kind of get together what we have prepared for you. Thank you, thank you very much. Oh, Chaplain? Never blame the chaplain for the weather because we're supposed to start at 9 o'clock and finish by 10. It would have been the perfect weather for us. So thank you. A mayor, thank you for saying something about where the Filipinos are. I know that when I go to heaven, there will be Filipinos. I've been to Iraq, they were there. I've been to Europe, they were there. And if you decided to go to hell, they will be there as well. <laughs> Let me say a blessing for all of you as we close. It's just a short prayer. <clears throat> Dear God, as we conclude this commemoration this morning, we join in chorus and say, Bravo Zulo, Jabul Dan, and thank you for all our veterans. May the good Lord bless all our veteran, veterans and their families. May the Almighty God give them strength and courage when they face life's challenges ahead. May God of comfort be with their loved ones, and may your eternal presence reassure those who are lonely. May God of peace will reign in the hearts and the minds of restless soul. May God bless our veterans now and forevermore. And thank you for the food that we are about to partake. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's all pray also for good weather next year, Father. <laughs> okay, the Christmas is ready for you guys to go. And I would like to also to thank all the Filipino uh, organization in Kitsap County, the Bisayan, the Ilocanos, for participating in this event. Thank you very much.